Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. Okay, we are now video number 14 on our Jesse Chorley panel. Um, the sun, the clock, this is what we're going to work on next. I've been looking at this a lot since um, doing all these other pieces and trying to work out what I can do up there that's you know nice and special because it's the top of our piece. So I didn't really want to just embroider it like our houses, just, you know, normal um, stem stitch and embroidery, satin stitch and the numbers. I just, I don't know, it, I just want to do something more elaborate there. Plus it's the second last opportunity to have a really good play on this panel. So I just didn't want to fill the face with seed stitch and satin stitch the numbers in. So. Yeah, I've been looking and looking and thinking and thinking for a few weeks now, and I think I have a plan. I know the colors I wanna use up here are yellows and oranges. We haven't used a lot of yellow through the piece, and where I have, I really like it. Everything's gone blues and reds and that, so this corner is going to be all about yellow. I have started seed stitching through here when I did the little house. I just sort of kept drifting up, so there's a lot more seed stitch to do but um, that will all fall into place. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to cover the numbers and the clock hands. Now, the, I will most likely, I think, bring the clock hands back into play, but the numbers, I think they're gonna disappear forever. The reason is I've got a little clock elsewhere, so it's not like I haven't got the um, traditional Jesse uh, clock. I really want to do some embroidery on some floral treatments up here and I want to stay within the yellows. So this is what I'm thinking. I've grabbed a piece of calico and I've laid it over the clock and then sketched the perimeter, this edge with my pen. So what I'm going to need to do is unpick that corner including that doily and this little guy, and then insert this in to cover the um, sketch. And then I'm gonna redo portions of it once I sort of work out what's gonna be in position. I'm also going to needle point applique, or soft edge applique, the face of the clock, because I want it to be a little bit raised, if that makes sense. So I'll work my way around tucking in the fabric on this edge so that I get a nice rounded soft puffy edge of the clock uh, of the sun so I'm going to call it a sun from this point because it's technically not going to be a clock having said that those hands might come back into play once I work out how the embroideries are going to sit so that's my first thing unpick it and insert this cover which will push the blue back away and um, yeah I won't see the Jesse sketch under there now then I went hunting for any embroideries that I had that had yellow so I found a few this one here is from um, uh, just a random piece of fabric now I have used that before on my needle book. If you've watched my video, I'll just grab my needle book. Hold one second. Here it is. That's the fabric in there as part of my needle book. So I had two pieces. I actually think it's from a sheet and I believe it came from um, uh, a pack of fabric I purchased online from someone. So that's my last piece and I really would like to see those roses winding their way around the edge of the clock. So that's a definite. So from there I can just build it up with lots of doilies and lace and things. So that would look pretty good. But I found some other pieces that I did consider. There's that one there and it ties in the colours we've used. But I have decided against that because I sort of think it needs to be flowers in a garden, not coming out of the clock. And then what do I do around this edge? Because it's sort of 
a, what I call a terminating design. So it would be quite tricky to grow that further, where if that was in a garden, you could easily grow more embroidery in amongst it. So that one got rejected. And I also have this beautiful piece of cross stitch that someone had in a pack of fabrics that I purchased. So that had potential, but it's just not the right, um, I don't know, it's just not, not right, but I do love it. And once again, what do I do around this, this edge? So I rejected that one and then I found this little guy. So what I'm thinking is using these two, which will make it quite an interesting uh, construction and a, a real challenge to work two pieces of embroidery into one design. So I will fussy cut out the flowers on this piece and then work into it somehow this piece and then start layering all of the little lacy trims and then through my threads that I choose to embellish, I will match up some of these colors sort of to bring it all together. So it might be a case of some brown needs to come in around these um, and then some of these greens in around here. So I'll probably use the stems of the two images to intertwine, if that makes sense. So I then went looking for some cottons and things that I could use to sort of blend it all together. So I've got some Appleton wool. I even grabbed out some um, silk um, ribbon. So I'm thinking I could do some buds in around the place in those colors. A Little bit of um, green embroidery, cotton or crochet cotton, and then some additional yellows in variegated colors. So that's the little pile of goodies that I picked for this corner. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is in amongst there, I'd really like to use some of this scallopy um, lace as well. So that's the plan. I'm going to reconstruct a floral treatment in the yellows because of the sun in this corner and, um, and then embroider on top. So it should be a lot of fun. So I just then wanted to show you my idea that I have for the rays of light. I went hunting for textures in the way of yellows and golds. And um, this is what I come up with. And I sort of like this one. It's from Steph Francis. I haven't used any of the yarns that I purchased from her website a couple months ago. There's a video where I review all of my order and this one is in amongst the textures. So I'm really liking the look of some of these colors in here, especially those colors. So I'm thinking I'm going to just need just little bits of all of these yarns and then couch them in. And I think it's gonna give quite a textured, beautiful look to the rays of uh, sunlight, the rays coming off the sun. Whether I can get the watch hands in over here, I'm, I'm just not sure. I'm not gonna commit to including the numbers or the watch hands at this stage because I just don't wanna inhibit what these um, floral pieces could do here in this corner. So looking forward to this one, it's gonna be uh, quite a creative challenge and I think it's gonna make quite a statement in this corner of the panel. Okay, I'm going to stop the video there. I think I'll come back in a few seconds and I will have added in this piece and also fussy cut these elements out and sort of got them where I want them and stitched them down. So then I'll show you that before I start the actual embroidery process. So we'll put those threads to one side because I think the first step will be getting our base down, our background, for want of a better word. Okay, I'll see you all in a moment, having done um, the background to this area. Okay, see you soon. Okay, I'm back. Now, I've unpicked the perimeter here of our piece, and I've just 
peeled it back a little bit to slide in that piece of calico to cover the um, blue print that was behind. I've then worked my way around this edge, turning it under so that I can come along and slip stitch that down to get a nice rounded, neat edge to the sun. Um, I've then gone to the two pieces of embroidery and fussy cut them out. I didn't do too much to the, the uh, rose piece. It's pretty much as is. And I'm gonna have it sort of come off the sun just a little bit up here. But this one here, I ended up taking it apart a little bit more. So that was the main piece. This little guy here was actually coming down here and it just, I don't know, just didn't seem to be needed. I think by the time I embroider that rose, there'll be enough happening over here and with some doily coming in. And I sort of grabbed that piece out because I haven't used one of them yet. So I'm thinking that will go there. That's the original from the corner. So that'll tuck back up into there. And then I've got lots of little elements that we could bring in up here just to disguise the fact that that um, branch is sort of going nowhere, so to speak. So that's the construction so far. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to now invisible stitch that all down so that it stays and then I'll start looking at um, adding detail of embroidery to sort of make the rose come alive, the leaves come alive and then working out where all my stems are going and making sure they sort of make sense. Otherwise I'm going to have, for example, this little brown one here sort of goes nowhere. So I'll try and match a thread to that brown and then maybe do a little little leaf or I don't know it's just a case of looking at each piece there's another one here that sort of stops and ends whether that'll be covered probably will be by a little scrap so it may not be an issue and then um, I can then start looking at the rays of light coming around the side so that's where I'm at with the piece. So my next step is just to stitch it all down so it doesn't move and then I can start embellishing. So when I come back, I will show you what I've done. So I'll see you all soon, bye. Hello everyone, I'm back. It's been a week, I believe. Maybe not quite a week, maybe about five days of um, embroidering and bits and pieces in life to do. So I finally got my son completed. Gee, you would not recognize it. I'm so pleased with it. It has come up beautifully. So if you recall, which you will, because it was only a few seconds ago, there was a piece of fabric lying through here that was from some, um, I think it was bed linen. I actually think it was like a decorative edge from a pillow slip. I'm not sure because um, I got it in a pack of fabric some time ago and it had on it the two roses and then two little buds. I've then added a ribbon rose at the top here and at the bottom and then here. These were stems that just finished. They sort of went nowhere. So I had to sort of do something to make it look like it was, um, you know, alive. So that's how I decided to finish this little piece off. I haven't stitched the leaves or the stem. I couldn't decide and I just, I don't know, I knew if I stitched it, I'd probably like it, but I really liked what the designer had done in the printing of this fabric because they've made it subtle. They've also created um, light and dark in the way that they've filled in the painted leaf there. So I really enjoyed that design. And I sort of put so much into all of the yellow that I didn't want the green then suddenly to be blaring off the page. So I decided not to do anything with that. I then um, had this little piece, which was just a little square from a dolly. I added some um, more brown to it. So this terminated here. So I added a little leaf and then a little curl. I then added a leaf there a leaf here and a leaf there. And then just in here, I did another leaf and another leaf. 
and that's all I did. I had thought I'd wind it through the whole thing, but I sort of decided that there were two shrubs near each other. They weren't exactly intertwined. So we left the big feature leaf and then I just worked on the little ones and then these little flowers were part of that doily. So I sort of didn't need to do too much more. And then to soften it again, I then added a heap of little lace um, leaves off of that um, piece of lace that I've cut away at many times to get these little leaf shapes. So in came then the square doily. I unpicked it all and restitched. You'll see that um, the edging up there is a heavier thread. I've decided um, now what I'm going to do with my border. We tacked it all down just with the whip stitch using normal cotton. So I couldn't decide what I was going to do to finish it. I'm going to actually just replace it with a heavier thread, the pearl cotton. I, I've decided I really like just that random stab stitch look. So as I work around, I'll just slowly unpick this thread here and then replace it with, um, you know, stranded cotton. And that stranded cotton is the same I've been using on all the seed stitch. So what else did I do? On the very edge of my sun, I just did a running stitch in a variegated thread. That variegated thread I actually used as my seed stitch throughout, which was such a... Uh, a really good product to use because I had a white fabric that this sat on and then a creamy fabric that the um, embroidery leaf sat on you could see the two but as soon as I seed stitched over the whole area you just cannot see that there are two different colored fabrics there and by using a variegated stitch it um, variegated colored stitch I think it came up beautifully so pretty happy with the way that looked. Um, I think you could use a plain yellow too and it still would push that background back so you wouldn't notice that there were two uh, fabrics involved in the, the patch working of this. Now the sun rays, I'm super pleased with them. As I mentioned, I wanted to use a Steph Francis yarn and I unraveled it and I got five beautiful threads out of it two of which I chose to use in my sun. The other three were just a little bit too fine, just a little bit narrow. Some of the strokes in Jessie's pen here were a little bit thick. So I ended up using that one, which has got a nice thick, thick feel about it. And this guy is actually a chenille feel. So it's like a fluffy it was a little bit of a bugger to pull through the fabric, but I just took my time and just pulled it up very carefully because the chenille, it um, like the first piece I cut up was like 30 centimeters long and I did the first few, but by the time I got to this last one, I was starting to bunch the chenille up and then it just snapped. So that sort of taught me that just a, a couple at a time, cut another piece, a couple more at a time and then finish it off. So. I just couched these into position with some yellow cotton, some sewing machine cotton. These guys here, you can actually see the couching over the chenille just, but the fluffy chenille has disguised it well. But this flatter ribbon, I couldn't couch it because it changes colour so much that you would see it. So I just did a, a tiny little invisible stitch through the whole thing just to hold it down into position. So the yarn that I use, these are some that I got with the order. Now I have a video that goes through um, Steph Francis yarns and threads that I ordered a couple months ago. So if you did want to just see the rest that is available, um, jump over and have a look at that video because it'll give you a little bit more information. But these guys are part of the textured range. So we've got the green, a duck egg blue, blue and the pink and a rainbow color. And when you unravel them, which they are just gorgeous, you actually get five different threads. The chenille, one with a real shine about it, one not so shiny, one with a little metallic through it, and then this ribbon. So a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of fun. I think I'll need to get back on her website and get some more because they would just make such an interesting range of threads to have in your stash especially for this type of work when you want 
textures and um, movement and texture, I guess is the only real word to describe it. So that's it for the sun. My beautiful yellow sun, my floral sun is um, finished. Now I've also gone through and seed stitched the remaining um, panel. So technically my seed stitching is done. I sort of just kept going and um, I'm pleased I did because now I can focus on the, the last section, which will be our little ship and a little bit of um, design work either side of it. So I'm not sure what I'll do with the ship yet. I think I'll keep it pretty true to Jessie. So I'll go back through Instagram and see when she launched this panel and just see if there's some examples around of how she stitched it. I know she's very embroidery based, not so much um, what we do here. So I'm thinking the little ship is going to be very true to Jessie's style. But um, I'll go and have a little look and do a bit of research and we'll see how we go. So I'll just bring this sun up to the camera so that you can get a closer look at all the detail in there. It was so much fun to do. I just, I don't use a lot of yellow in my work, but when I do, I really enjoy it. I don't know why I don't use more yellow. It's just a fantastic color to work with, especially in um, flowers. Look at all that seed stitch, my goodness. And then it's right through there coming up. Oh man, that is so much work. I'm sort of going to miss it, I think. It's um, one part of the panel I have really enjoyed is all that seed stitch. Lots and lots of them. Okay, I shall leave it at that. Thank you, everyone. I will see you in the next video and uh, happy stitching. Bye.